Hi, Billy Dillard from Billy Dillard Art. Uh, this is a short video on this bear here. What happened is I got him carved out and I decided I want to change his tongue. Now, I could go through all the hassle of carving it out of a piece of wood, graft it in there, which would, you know, uh, I think it'd take me a little while, but, and it'd be fragile. But what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna run some screws in there and then I'm gonna wrap it with wire and then I'll put some sculpting epoxy on there and sculpt it out and make it that way I can shape it pretty much whatever I want so if you're working on a project uh, and you break it or you decide to change your mind yeah, well you can definitely change it so anyway so let me show you the products I'm using so right here I get these at Home Depot and they got um, a torque head on them hopefully you can see that and on this particular one I'm using the four inch one simply because I want to run them into the carving pretty good to make sure I got some uh, stability. And so then we got our drill and we got our, these come, matter of fact, this bit comes with the screws. When you buy a box of screws, you get this bit mm, right there. Now after I get all that done, then this uh, heavy gauge wire right here. Uh, I get these at the welding, welding supply place uh, for when I'm gas welding, but you can use a clothes hanger. They're just your typical metal clothes hanger. Hopefully you can still find one. They'll work just as well. Um, so once I run the screws in, then I'll cut a piece of that and shape it, and then I'll wrap it with wire. Let's see, first one. You can see that cedar is uh, kind of fragile, but it won't matter with this here. Oh, what's going on with that bear? It's got some tusk sticking out there. Okay, so now let's get a basic shape here going on. about um, mm, that should be long enough and then these here are actually got wire cutters on here kind of dull but they they should still work okay now this is where two pliers, pair of pliers are coming handy. You can grab one like this here, and then you can shape it. So what I'm wanting to do is kind of bend the tongue up. This is actually going to be part of the tongue. And what I'll do is uh, I'm going to take it down to the barn and spot weld it on there. Now, if you don't have a welder, you could actually um, glue it on there. All it needs to do is stay on there long enough to get your wire wrapped around it. So, I got my uh, piece of wire here, which, like I say, you could use clothes hanger to do the same thing, and I spot weld it to the screws. But if you can't spot weld it, what you can do is you could just glue that, you know, with a hot glue or whatever. And then this wire here, this is a tie wire for rebar when you're tying rebar together. So at Home Depot, you can get it in their section where they have rebar. And it's got kind of an oily coat on it, as you can see by looking at my hands. So you're best to wipe it off with a denatured alcohol or something before you put it on there. So I'm going to go get something and wipe this off. And then I'll come back and I'll wrap it around here. I could probably get by without even putting it on here and just putting my sculpting epoxy right over that. But better safe than sorry. So I'll go ahead and do that and show you how to do it. I'll be right back. Okay, so base is just a matter of getting started. And there again, all this is for is just to give your sculpting epoxy something to uh, grab hold of. I, I could probably do it without it, but 
I'm going to go ahead and do it just to show you. Oh yeah, definitely be wearing your safety glasses with this because when you're swinging this wire around, it could hit you in the eye and put your eye out really, real quick. So don't take chances with it. Wear your safety glasses. This will make for a really strong part. Right here, I need to get on the other side of that screw there. And now, I've not got that good enough, so I'm gonna cut it and then just feed it back in here anywhere I can get it to go in. And then you can take your pliers and manipulate the wire. Because I don't, I don't want it to be so thick when I put my epoxy on there that I have to put a bunch of epoxy and the tongue gets too thick. So you can just take your pliers, squeeze your wire together. And that way the tongue won't be so thick. Get under here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I got the sculpting epoxy mixed. Uh, today I'm using Magic Sculpt, the same stuff I used on the eyebrows up here, or eyelids, I guess. Um, so, and I actually got a video on my YouTube channel on mixing it. So if you haven't seen the video, just um, check my channel out. You'll find it there. Um, I'll show you how to mix the product. So now let's get started. So I got to get it up in there good enough. So I just take some water and just one of these wooden tools that you can get at a craft store. And you want to damp it in water that way your epoxy doesn't stick. And then you can just take it and work it in there really good. Let's see if we can get some underneath here too. So usually when I do stuff like this, I do it in layers. So I'm not really concerned about getting the finished look on this here. I just want to get it where it's um, has basically just a general shape of what I'm after. And I'll come back later and do another coat after this coat sets up. It's a good thing about this magic sculpt is um, you can just build it up in layers and the other coat will just adhere to the first one without any problems. It feathers out really good. So right now we're just getting it in there. Up in his mouth where I can... I had a chunk of wood break out when I was drilling it. So I'll just build it back with epoxy here. And it will be stronger than it was before. All right, now... As you can see, I'm just really squishing it inside into that wire. So when this stuff hardens up, it that'll be one tough little tongue. So it would be pretty tough to try to break it off. I mean, you'd have to really put some effort into it. You can imagine if that was just, if I'd have carved that out of the cedar like there, it would have been really fragile, easy to break. Let's see, how would the grain been running? Yeah, the grain here, right here the grain would have been running up and down. So you could have just snapped it off without much, without any effort at all. 
but not like this it'll be there there again first time around don't worry about getting it perfect just get it blocked into the general shape you want and you can come back with your next coat and that'll that'll be your finished coat as far as getting any detail or anything you want in here if anything try not to build your first layer out too thick unless you want to have to come back in there with some power burr bits and grind on it so what i mean by that is you're better off to leave it not build out to the where you want it but if you have to it's I mean, you can certainly do it because I've done it multiple times where I've had to come in and and uh, grind it for whatever reason with power burr bits. Maybe I just want to create a certain texture or whatever. But if you're using the Typhoon bits, you do not want to use Typhoon bits on this now with that wire because if you cut through that epoxy and hit the wire, it'll really mess up your Typhoon bit. So if you're going to do that, use a carbide bit because at least if you hit if you cut through your epoxy and you hit the wire um and if you just hit a little bit it you'll probably still be able to use your carbide bit again but don't use the typhoon bits or the cut saw bits it'll ruin either one of those if it hits that wire now right now what i'm doing is just looking at what shape i got going on here looking pretty good I mean I could take and turn that down if I wanted to I could I could come out and do like that you know <laughs> which I kind of like that actually just take it mm, yeah. <laughs> actually I think I like that and I'm gonna leave it it'll create a little landing platform for the bee or butterfly whatever I put up there that's kind of cool okay now i got some extra so what i'm going to do with this extra right now instead of wasting it is i'm going to create um, something going on with his lower lip it would be easier if i waited and did it the next time around but i've got this extra so let's see let's see what i can do with it Yeah. So there again, just use your water on your tools here to keep the epoxy from sticking to them. After this, um, I kind of like what's going on there. See right here, we need to cut that, push that down. And then get back and look at, see what you got going on if you like it or if you don't. Readjust that a little bit. Now, actually, you know, if I was concerned about my epoxy sticking, what I would do is before I did this, if I was concerned about it, is I'd take uh, something like West Systems epoxy or any liquid epoxy, and I would. They call it hot coating it so i'd brush on a coat of epoxy like uh, the liquid form because it would soak in and catch it right when it tacks up not when it hardens but when it's really tacky 
and then put your sculpting epoxy over that and the two will harden up okay so um, what you've learned today is uh, if you decide to change your whatever you're working on as far as your woodwork and you've done a carving, and you decide to change it I've showed you a way you can do it um, maybe you break a piece off of one of your your carvings so you can use the same technique to put a piece back on and build it back out by using the sculpting epoxy and your wire and your screws or however you want to do it um, next week we'll work on the tongue some more and show you the tongue finished up so come back next week and check out the next video uh, make sure you subscribe share it with your friends and if you have any questions contact me leave a comment let me know as far as anything that uh, you wasn't clear on what I was talking about all right see you next week later